I am sure. And you are listening to Light Up with Shua, a weekly podcast to open our hearts and minds on a journey with me. And I hope we have good news and you are, uh, you know, you can hold the seat and that would be beautiful. That would be wonderful. I, I would hope so. But, you know, life has also given us so many challenges. Yes. Um, you know, we can sit and have this great conversation and we didn't even go into the struggles of being yes, yes. Um, a woman of color. That's, right? That's the what struggle. I want to come to. Definitely. Please, yeah. you do need to talk to because it's not so simple that you have reached this um, stage oh. and this position. And I do want you to talk about being an immigrant. Well, you were three, that is young, but, uh, you know, it's, you are actually almost a second generation, to be yeah. honest. But yeah. still, being woman of color, I would like you to touch upon that, please. That is a very important aspect of your life. And for people who are struggling nowadays, being an immigrant or first or second generation, even third generation, even, I mean, the way we are, you know, facing. And... How did you, like, what are your struggles as a mother also, as an immigrant, as a, as a political candidate? I mean, touch upon any of those in sequence, however you want to, please. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the most obvious thing is that America, um, for 400 years, we have struggled with race relations. It isn't new. Yes. And it isn't, you know, and, and we haven't done enough. We have to keep doing more to keep changing it. Just the other day, something as simple as you walk into a uh, retail store and um, they pass you over to say hello to the white woman who walks in uh, in her fancy, you know, coat, yeah. right? Yeah. Something as simple as that oh. cuts at you. It, it, it makes you, it belittles you. And it's disappointing, right? Um, when you know you've got the same kind of disposable income or more than that person, but they didn't look at that or they don't know that. So then they look at the face, they look at the scarf, they look at the color of the skin, you know, and all of that. Um, growing up uh, in the 70s and 80s, very few people were here of Indian descent and South Asian descent. And we were the first non-white family in our neighborhood and we were the first non-white family at our school and for five years um, my sister and i were bullied almost every day after school during school etc in the winter it would be something as simple as you know it's snowing outside right now it, it would be whitewashing and they would take our faces shove them into the snow and rub them Oh, wow. And then when Physical, you pulled it back physically up, physically, you were bullied. Wow. Physically. Oh, wow. And when you pulled it back up, you would see this white of the snow. So you were a white face. And then you would get cuts because snow is really ice, yeah, right? Yeah. So it cuts your skin. Yeah. And I would tell my parents, like, I, I don't, I don't want to live here. Let, we, let's move. And they would say, this is the best we could afford. This is, you know, the best we could do. This, I, we hear it's a good school. You just have to be strong. And experiences like that can break you. And I know many young people who ended up either hating who they are because they were convinced, like the majority community, that whatever we were was bad. And they spend their life trying not to be who you are. And, you know, you can't yes. escape it. So you're pretty messed up. Or it gives you this incredible resilience and this ability to take a lot of crap, so how, um, so but not be broken. So, um, so, and I ahead. and I hope that you know that's what it's done, where it's uh, made us strong and not broken. But it doesn't mean it didn't hurt, mm. and it doesn't mean I still don't remember every single time that happened. Uh, I remember when I was twelve. Um, on the playground, a young boy came up to me and said, you're the ugliest girl in the school. Oh, Nobody wow. will ever want to date you. The irony of it is, was I was a Muslim American girl. I didn't want to date. But <laughs> what he said hurt right. so much because everybody heard it, right? Because all my, everybody was there. And I ended up marrying someone who tells me every day of my life how much he loves me and how beautiful he thinks I am. 
Wonderful. But Shua, in my brain, I still remember being the 12 year old girl who this boy said, I'm the ugliest girl in the school and no one will ever want to date me. So those are just things you have to lock up in a box sometimes to be able to move forward. And every once in a while at a dark space in a dark moment, mm. it pops out and uh, then you have to deal with it. So here I would like to ask, um, so I, I want to see like, like now you has, have experienced you when you were younger, you experienced yourself and you did bring it to your parents. So now I want you to educate us here. Your parents tried their best what they knew how to handle you. Were they, uh, so, like now you are going through yourself, how did you protect your children from that? And what can you advise the parents that if this happens, how do you, you build resilience? How do you do that? Or how do you get help so that you don't go through that? I mean, I guess I assume that you have built resilience and you survived. But mm -hmm. of course, as you know, moments do come. But how did you fa save your children from that? Because yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, some of it you don't. I think sometimes, you know, our generation in America, the research is showing that we tried so hard to protect our children from so many things. And sometimes you can't. Yeah. Um, and sometimes you can. I remember there was an instance. Remember, this was the, my generation of kids where uh, my kids gen was a generation of 9-11. Um, and after 9-11, uh, one of the kids that my son was playing with, and he was just a baby at the time, you know, like six years old, uh, said to him at the playground, when they were like, what are you going to be when you grow up? And they're all playing basketball. And Sajid said, I'm going to be a basketball player. And one of his friends said, no, you're going to be a terrorist. Oh, my God. Wow. And um, Sajid came home, and every night at dinner we would have a, uh, what was the best part of your day? And what was the part that you would change? We'd ask each other that. Oh, nice. And when it came to his turn that day, I said, what would be the part of your day you would change, Sajid? And he said, well, Timmy asked, told me I was going to go to jail because I'm a terrorist. I'm going to grow up to be a terrorist. And then, of course, I slowly pulled the story out. And um, we finished dinner, and I went upstairs, and I just cried. <laughs> I just cried in my room because I knew like it was all opening up again, another chapter in America that was going to be ugly and it was going to be ugly for us. And I didn't know what to do. And I picked up the phone and I called Billy's mom. And these are kids, all the kids play with each other. Right. And I just said, um, Susan, I, I want to share something with you today. I'm not sharing it out of anger. I'm not sharing it, but I'm in pain and I want to share it with you. And she said, yes, what happened? And I told him, told her what occurred. Mm -hmm. And um, she, it was very quiet for a long time. And she said, Delara, I'm so ashamed. I'm so sorry. I will talk to Billy. Even if he didn't mean it that way, mm -hmm. he has to understand how his words impacted Sajid mm -hmm. and impacted your family. She mm -hmm. said, I'm so sorry. And I I wasn't expecting that, Shua. I mm -hmm. thought maybe a little defensiveness. Mm -hmm. I thought maybe, a, I wonder what Sajid said. Um, and instead, she took ownership of her son and ownership that we were in this together. Mm -hmm. So there are bright lights. Yes, um, yes. There's going to be a lot of pain. We're not done. So we well, haven't ha finished if, talking about race and religion. We're not done, right. but there so, will be will be bright lights. Sorry about trying to. Uh, sorry, the urge I have I this to ask because there's so yeah. many questions so, coming up in my mind, uh, and these are so important points that we are discussing and coming from you because. I really want to glean out of you all the lessons we can uh, because we are in this stage again nowadays. Yes. And, 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 and your coaching, your experience, your talking about it really, I believe, uh, is definitely needed. There's a, it's a lot of need out there and it will really help some people who don't know what to do. Uh, coming from you. So uh, what would you say that, what if the response was not like that, the positive response or the ownership that she took? If mm -hmm. it wasn't 
that way, what one can do in that situation? Or is, have you faced anything similar? Uh, yeah. I mean, and, yeah, go ahead. Please. And yes, there have been. Actually, the, the, the other situations have been more often, right, where, where, where someone is right back at you angry or, or defensive or refuses to acknowledge that they have done something to hurt or to, um, uh, you know, it, 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 it just uh, hurt someone basically. Um, and I go back to the, um, Oh God, you know, help me change the things I can change. Mm. Help me, um, you know, leave the things I can't change mm. and help me understand the difference. Right. And, um, or, you know, or as the prophet told us to do prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you see something wrong, change it with your hands. If you can't change it with your hands, change it with your words. Speak against it because it is wrong. And if you can't change it with your hands and actually act on it, if you can't change it with your words and speak against it, then make prayer in your heart that it's that it stops and that it the, the wrong is righted. Though that is the weakest form of faith, at least do that much. Mm. And I keep coming back back to that. It's not going to be one instance in anybody's life which will change who we are as people and what we're doing. But it's going to be a lot of different things and people working. The post-Trump era, we saw a lot of people come together. And as much as there was hate and division, there has been people coming together in ways we never dreamed of. That's true. Mm -hmm. ways we never dreamed of silver linings like when there was a travel ban which was horrendous when i went to the airport to protest the travel ban and and we all organized the a, a protest latino people community members were there african-american community members were there asian community members were there gay straight tall short rich white pink blue everybody was there these are going to be the silver lining. So th there are things we're going to change, okay. and that's great. Other things, they're, they're, we're not going to change, and um, we're just going to have to keep working at it. And that's why we do what we do, right? We run for office. That's we great. teach. Yeah. You yeah. hold this podcast. This is your way of changing the world and making it better. Mm -hmm. These are our ways of making the best world we can for our, for our children and their children. Thank you. Thank you for this Thank hopeful you. message. Um, and anything that you can uh, tell uh, quickly before I move on to my last leg of questions, um, mm -hmm. what can parents do or uh, where can they find help? Because there are all kinds of parents, right, um, who don't really can be paralyzed by the situation and not know what to do. Uh, yeah. Is there a way that they can find something online? Can you suggest uh, what's the, uh, you know, first um response that they should take uh, to protect their children from bullying or from for themselves or sure, in this situation sure. yeah um i mean i would number one always take time to reflect before you act try to identify what you're angry about okay or what you are really hurt about. Try to identify what that is. So it's not a, a reflexive anger towards someone. Okay. Once you've identified it, if it's something that you can discuss with a school administrator, a teacher, they need to know these things. They have to know. Mm. Don't go in angry. Don't go in frustrated. Mm. I know you feel that. But try to find a way to make this happen so it's a win-win, where you're actually saying to them, I want you to know some of the things that are happening so that you are aware, and I trust you as a professional that you will find a solution. But I, I need to tell you so you know. I'd also go to the school counselors and social workers. Sometimes even the principal can't solve this, but the social workers and counselors can. And again, not making your child the victim in this, mm. not making someone else's child necessarily the bully in this, but helping that both of these children are evolving. Okay. How can we help them both evolve well? Okay. How can we help my child be confident and strong and how can we help this young man who actually committed an act of bullying understand what he or she did so that they, they stop doing it? Thank you. Thank you so much. And then go to the resources online. There's so many books now. There's so many short articles you can read. Okay. Self-help okay. is not imaginary. It's available. Okay. And we have to access it. 
Wonderful, wonderful. So I'm not going to go into your policies and all that. I will talk in when after you're done on 20th, after 20th March, like what are you doing to put these kind of issues and what's, what, you know, so that, that's going to take another hour. So I, I, I'm mindful of your time, but I do want to get these questions out of you because I, uh, I had a wonderful conversation so far and I want to make sure that I get your answers about these important uh, life questions. So here I begin. Uh, what is the value of gratitude in your life, Dilara? <laughs> After that feeling of God consciousness, there has to be with it the feeling of gratitude. Because when you know that God is with you every minute and every second, you are so grateful because for everything that went right, it could have gone wrong. And for everything that went wrong, it could have gone worse. So you've got to reach for that moment of gratitude. And, uh, you know, you can do everything from a gratitude journal, which I have, <laughs> which I write in maybe once a week or whatever, to just prayer. Our five times a day prayer is actually a check-in with our creator. It's a moment of reflection. It's a moment of gratitude. And it's a moment of asking for more. All of that is good. And so those are the ways that I, I stay fueled um, during difficult times and fueled during good times. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, so uh, I guess your value of time uh, would be interesting to know what is the value of time for you in all the commitments that you are involved or yeah. from a different point of view, whichever take you want to take on this question. Um, you know, time, in today's world, time is the most expensive commodity. Mm -hmm. It really is. And you talk about love language and how people interact with each other. Think about it. If you can give your parents time, that's all they want from you. If you have it, if you're blessed to have them alive, all they want from you is time. They don't even want you to do anything for you, for them. They just want you to spend time with them, call them, be with them, talk to them. Same thing that you want for your children. Friends, what do friends give each other? They give time. Like, I don't need a gift in my life right now, a present. The best thing you can give me is 10 minutes of your undivided time. And the best thing I can give you is my undivided time. And here I and should that's say a that. very yes. hard thing to do. Thank you. I have two more questions, but I want to thank you for your time. I really appreciate your time. Um, to give, to I know how committed and how much you have to do, and your undivided attention. I'm so privileged that I got that today. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is um, your purpose of your life then, today, if I ask you that? Yeah. Leave the world a better place than when I came into it. Serve my creator by serving his creation and leave the world a better place. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, any message of hope that you would like to give? Mm -hmm. And I do want that from you because I, I, our conversation was quite hopeful as much as it was practical. Mm -hmm. I mean, the message of hope, someone once said that to me, the school system's broken, there's nothing you can do about it. And I remember saying, I don't have the luxury of hopelessness. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of thousands of children are going to school every day. I don't have the luxury of saying the system's broken and there's nothing we can do about it. Uh, I just uh, got to get up the next day and try another time. So hope is a requirement. We don't have the luxury to wallow in hopelessness. I know that's harsh, but we have to move forward because we need it. The people around us need it. And our creator didn't create us to be hopeless. Very nice. He created us to do the best we can. He will make the end decision. That's wonderful. Thank you. 
And my last question, and before I ask my last question, is there anything else uh, you would like to say? You asked some really great questions. <laughs> I mean, great opportunity for me to reflect. I appreciate it. And um, maybe refuel so that I'm doing all the things that I'm saying I'm doing and trying to do. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate that. So, um, message of hope was wonderful. And like, I want to ask, what lights you up, Dilara? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what lights me up I mean it all is the same thread right what lights me up is um, when I have whether I, I, I aim to do it or not is whether when I have served someone and and I can see it or they've shared it or it's made a difference whether they say it or not i can you know there's it's made a difference um just lights me up to serve others mm. because then we feel like we have a purpose in creation wonderful wonderful on that note because that's what you're doing through your education through becoming a political candidate you are serving people <laughs> can't wait to see you uh, and it's a lot of work i guess ahead of you <laughs> So I'm going to ask you for something for me. Um, send me positive vibes, right? Like when we, when we, whether it's pray for someone in our heads and our hearts or write a short text, I get texts from friends, I get emails from friends, I get a quick phone call from a relative. Um, love that you're doing this. Stay strong. Be brave. Or someone says, I thought of you. Or even if they don't even say anything and I think they've thought of me, I feel it. It means the world. So just keep sending it. And um, so I guess if, you, if you thought about running for office, <laughs> think about it seriously. Do it. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll discuss that with you. Uh, jokingly, I have done it, but some people said it, but I haven't really thought of, like, seriously. Yeah. But uh, maybe I'll t get some... Um, you know, some education from you and see what, what is required and uh, if, I, if, if I'm even close to that. But thank you for thinking. Um, I guess then you are a very spiritually connected person to yourself that you are feeling. Uh, I hope you can get my wife without my saying too much, but I will be in touch with you. And thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Dilara. Thank, thank you, Shua, and thank you to all your viewers and your podcast listeners. Great, great work. Keep doing it. Thank you for staying with me through this exciting episode. Please don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for the next episode of Light Up with Shua.